Good afternoon subscribers and welcome back to the 2019 academic year and let's hope that it's a successful year for one and all. Today I'm going to start on a new playlist which is going to be focused on the GCSE economic specification and that of course is the new GCSE spec specification which was assessed for the first time in the summer just gone. So we're considering the new 9 to 1 spec rather than the old ABC, etc. So I've been having a look through um, my students' marks, obviously. I've been having a look through the examiner's reports. And I'm obviously thinking, well, how can I enable and facilitate my students to do better in June 2020? And so over the course of the next series of videos, I'll bring you just a few brief points as to how the, how the paper is marked and the way in which, hopefully, you will be able to tailor your classwork, your homework and subsequently your revision to enable you to achieve the grade sevens, eights and nines. So, it is slightly different, I think, um, to the legacy specification, the former specification, and I think it's a bit tougher as well, I must say, I think it's a little bit harder to get the marks. So let's have a look, I'm going to go through two ideas here. Number one is just having a clear understanding of key terms, which uh, according to the examiner's report, that was not particularly well done in, in a lot of cases. And then the second one is how to answer explain questions, which are worth two marks on the paper. Okay, so let's consider having a clear understanding of key terms. This is nothing new, but it does crop up year upon year upon year upon year. And I think no matter how many times we as your teachers say it, uh, inevitably some people confuse terms. So let me just throw out a few examples. I'm not going to refer specifically to the papers which have just been completed in the summer of 2019 because your teachers will want to use those for revision. So I'm not going to refer to those here at all, but I'm just going to uh, give you a few examples based upon what I have seen in the examiner's report. So, terms which might be confused, profit and revenue. Revenue, of course, money coming in from sales, price times quantity. Profit is the difference, hopefully, between the revenue coming in and the costs which are going out. Production and productivity. Again, another often confused term. Production is, well, I produce two pens. Uh, if I only produce two pens per day, then my productivity is two, but if I produced double that tomorrow and I had four pens, then my productivity has gone up 100%. So productivity is out per, output per worker per period of time. And then another one which is often confused, a trade deficit and a budget deficit. Trade, of course, to do with imports and exports, value of imports being greater than the value of exports in the case of a deficit, and the budget deficit to do with what our Chancellor is about to embark upon on Wednesday, which is the spending review. Budget deficit is to do with uh, your government spending, so the money flows out of government coffers, being greater than the money coming in to finance that spending, and that money coming in comes from taxes. So that's government spending being greater than taxation. Now, I could have given you a whole host of examples, I'm sure your teachers will, will facilitate that for you, but just no tap bene, beware, you must, must, must be careful when asked to explain what key terms mean. Okay, next then. I've written here, go to the nth, the nth degree, go to the nth degree when answering explain questions. Now, what do I mean by the nth degree, I mean go above and beyond what you really think you should have to write. Just go that extra mile. Now these explain questions are worth two marks. So it's, it's not sufficient really on this specification at least. You know if it said explain demand for example, it's not really sufficient to just give the definition. You've got to get, that would get you one mark, you've got to go over and above that. So having looked at the examiner's report, so it's, it, what it looks like to me is this. It, there are two separate marks for an explained question. One for a very sort of basic standard answer, and then another one which develops that basic standard answer. 
So I'll give you a couple of examples. So if the question was simply, explain the role of a firm. So what does a firm do? A firm is a producer. So it produces goods and services. So that might be your basic point. And then just stepping that up. Now we're not going from you know, the floor to the ceiling here in terms of step up. It's just a small step upwards. But stepping that up a bit, we could then explain briefly, because there are only about four lines for an answer, we could explain that the firms are then responsible for the supply element of our market forces, the demand and supply. And that would help you then to get the second mark. What if the, ex the question was, explain the role of the government? So you could say something along the lines of, for a basic answer, in, from an economic perspective at least, they're responsible for the economic management, and then to step that up a bit, you could say that they do that using various tools at their disposal. It could be fiscal policy, monetary policy, or supply side policy. And that would be our sort of developmental point. And the final thing to say on this is that it, on those papers which have just been sat, explain is often, it's often uh, couched within the framework of a case study. So it might be explain the role of, I don't know, it might be explain the role of ASDA within the supermarket industry. Now if that's the case, you absolutely must, and this is where candidates lost many marks, you absolutely must answer in context. So you would have to couch your answer, so if it was explain the role of ASDA in the supermarket industry, so you would have to explain your answer about producing goods and services, you would maybe talk about foodstuffs um, within the supermarket industry and generating supply within the supermarket industry. You've got to answer it in context, that's very, very important. If you did not answer questions such as that in context, you got zero marks and we don't want zero marks. Okay, ladies and gents, that's the first one of these videos and I'll be back with a whole host more. Uh, this, if this is your first time watching one of my videos, please do subscribe and uh, follow me on Twitter, Instagram, etc. So I'll leave it at that. Bye for now.